Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kathleen Hicks. I direct the International Security Program here at CSIS, and it's wonderful to see so many of you here today. On behalf of the Japan Chair and the International Security Program, um, I want to uh, introduce our guest speaker, Admiral uh, Kawano, Chief of Staff of Japan's Self-Defense Force. And he is our guest here today for a very timely and important discussion of the state of the U.S.-Japanese alliance. In his capacity as Chief of Staff, Admiral Kawano supervises the operations of the Self-Defense Forces under the Minister of Defense and serves as the Minister's top-ranking military advisor. Prior to assuming his current position, the Admiral served as the Chief of Staff of the Maritime Self-Defense Forces, the Commander-in-Chief of the Self-Defense Fleet, and the Vice Chief of Staff, in addition to serving in various command and staff positions throughout his distinguished career. Notably, Admiral Kawano is a graduate also of the U.S. Naval War College. Admiral Kawano joins us after meeting with General Dempsey earlier today uh, for the U.S.-Japan Strategic Dialogue, which was held over at the National Defense University, and we hope that was a particularly productive and frank discussion. I'm also pleased to introduce our moderator for today, Ambassador Richard Armitage. Uh, he has served as the Deputy Secretary of State and in various senior positions in the government. He is, of course, himself an expert in the Asia-Pacific region and is a former naval officer himself. Ambassador Armitage is currently the president of Armitage International and a member of the Board of Trustees here at CSIS. After Admiral Kawano speaks, Ambassador Armitage will engage him in a discussion and then he will moderate a question and answer session that will involve the audience. As a reminder to our audience, as a military officer, Admiral Kawano will not be responding to questions related to the Japanese political process, including the ongoing debate on security legislation in the Japanese diet and the relocation of Futenma Air Base. Finally, before we begin today, I want to share with you our building safety precautions here at CSIS. We're quite confident that nothing will happen, uh, but should we uh, have any issues, we will all proceed uh, out of here under my instructions as the safety officer. I will be right here in the room with you and we'll let you know where we walk. Uh, with that, uh, please join me in welcoming Admiral Kawano. This is a little bit high, Tommy. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Admiral Kawano, the Chief of Staff, Joint Staff, Japan Self Defense Forces. I am glad to stand here to address CSIS. Today is July 16th. In a month from today, it will be August 15th, the day the World War II ended for the Japanese people. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the end of the World War II. Both Japan and the United States fought against each other as bitter enemies, and the fierce battle claimed millions of lives. In August 1945, when the war ended, not many people could have envisioned the state of Japan-U.S. relations today. Seventy years have passed since the end of hostilities and our bilateral relations have achieved miraculous levels of development. Now, in this milestone year, both countries are moving forward toward a new stage. Since time is limited today, I would like to talk about the future vision of the Japan-U.S. alliance briefly touching upon the history and the evolution of the Japan-U.S. alliance and effort to maintain the peace and the security of Japan. Our alliance started with the former Japan-U.S. Security Treaty, signed in 1951. As symbolized by the Korean War, the East-West divide was a great challenge for the East Asia region, as well as Japan and the United States. In the Cold War era, one of the main roles of the Japan-U.S. alliance was to defend Japan by preventing communism 
from spreading into Japan. What made it possible was the forward deployment of the United Forces stationed in Japan as the nuclear umbrella of the US as a deterrent. Three years later, in 1954, the then Japan Defense Agency and the Grand, Grand Maritime and Air Self Defense Forces were established. I was born that the same year. I don't know where it is just a coincidence or a destiny that I wear the uniform of the JSDF now. At the time, most of the equipment operated by the JSDF was supplied by US forces, including warships and aircraft. After that, Japan started to domestically developed its own equipment and also began least production of the same asset of the US forces, such as the P2V7 patrol aircraft and the F-104 fighter jet, and then equipped JSDF with them. This was the beginning of the trend developed our time and continued to today. These assets shared by the both forces can be said to have become the foundation of the current level of interoperability between the JSDF and the United States forces. The current Japan-US Security Treaty was signed in 1960. And since then, the government of Japan and the United States have worked together to build a robust alliance based on the idea of democracy, respect of human rights, law of, rule of law, and all our shared interests. Positioned squarely in the camp of the free world during the, war, during the Cold War, the Japan-US arrangement contributed to the security of Japan as well as to the peace and the stability of the region as a whole. Almost two decades later, the first guidelines for Japan-US defense cooperation were released in 1978. In the same year, I completed the officer candidate school and became a naval officer. I cannot remember what I thought and felt about the guideline at that time, but I imagine I had no idea about what the guideline were. <laughs> I never imagined that I would become the top officer of the JSDF and become involved in the guidelines. This was also the era when bilateral exercise between the JSDF and the US military gained momentum. The first bilateral exercise was held by the Air Self-Defense Force and the US Air Force in 1978. And not long after that, the Maritime Self-Defense Force participated in the RIMPAC for the first time in 1980. This was followed by the Grand Self-Defense Forces first bilateral exercise in 1981. It can be said that the time I was a young officer was an era that the foundation of Japan-US cooperation was formed. In November 1989, the Berlin Wall collapsed and the Cold War came to, the, to an end. This enormous change to the world order triggered a lot of friction and confrontation around the globe. Among the biggest incidents, at least from Japan's point of view, was the Gulf War, which started with the Iraqi forces invasion to Kuwait in 1990. Japan provided a considerable financial contribution, approximately $13 billion, which went largely unnoticed by the international community. 
Based on the international response, the government of Japan decided to send MSDF minesweepers to the Arabian Gulf for minesweeping operations. This deployment was the first overseas operation for the JSDF. At that time, I was in charge of the deployment at the Maritime Staff Office, and I was working very hard. We didn't have a lot of public support at first, but over time, it became clear that the deployment was viewed very favorably, and it boosted the public confidence in the JSDF. New challenges always come with friction. I believe that JSEF can remove such friction and win the public confidence when the JSDF sincerely accomplish their mission and live up to the public's expectations. Since that first deployment, the, the JSDF has expanded its overseas activities in various areas, including Cambodia, Mozambique, East Timor, and Golan Heights. Since the end of the Cold War, there has been an increase in challenges to trust and transparency in the areas surrounding Japan, starting with North Korea's nuclear development in 1993, and following rising tensions in the Korean Peninsula. Based on this situation, the guidelines were revised in 1997. The guidelines stipulated bilateral cooperation in various fields, such as maintenance of cross-cooperation information sharing, and deliberation of policies in peacetime, security dialogues, defense exchanges, peacekeeping operations, international humanitarian aid and relief activities, a study of bilateral planning and plans of mutual cooperation, strengthened joint exercises and training and building a coordination mechanism in order to defend Japan and built more stable international security environment. In 1998, the year after we revised the guidelines, North Korea launched a ballistic missile which flew over Japan. To deal with the threat of ballistic missiles, Japan's National Security Council approved a Japan-US joint study initiative on ballistic missile defense, which was the start of bilateral BMD cooperation. In March 2004, the Diet decided to introduce ballistic defense systems, followed by deployment of PAC-3 in 2007. In the same year, the destroyer, Aegis destroyer, Congo, concluded Japan's first successful launch test of an SM-3. I observed tests in Hawaii as a Director General of Defense Policy of Maritime Staff Office. I still remember everyone around me when we broke into a loud chair as a SM-3 hit the target. Now, bilateral BMD cooperation, including joint development of SM3 Block 2A, is a front runner of bilateral defense cooperation based on the Japan US alliance. The fight against international terrorist organizations has become the gravest challenge after the Cold War. The September 11th attacks on the U.S. shocked us. In November 2001, the government of Japan sent MSDF warships, including supply ships, to the Indian Ocean. 
in order to replenish, replenish, replenish U.S. Navy's warships engaging in the global war of terror. Our supply supported only U.S. forces at the beginning, but it was eventually expanded to include supplying the forces of other countries. The operation continued for about eight years, including a short break. One of our air transportation units provided humanitarian activities for the war in Iraq in 2003, shortly followed thereafter by the long-term deployment of the reconstruction assistance unit to Iraq from 2004 to 2009. In addition, we have conducted anti-piracy operations off the coast of Somalia and in the Gulf of Aden since 2009. After the end of the Cold War, the JSDF has deepened Japan-US cooperation and has expanded the scope and the substance its of activities in order to contribute to peace and stability in the region and to the world. Meanwhile, Japan has received a lot of support from the U.S., especially when the Great East Japan earthquake occurred in March 11, 2011. This major tremor and tsunami claimed tens of thousands of lives. Operation Tomodachi saved a countless number of lives and supported the survivors of the disaster. Beyond just the achievement of the operation themselves, people in Japan remember the U.S. support in their heart as a symbol of the strong bond of the alliance between Japan and the United States. Lessons learned in the Great East Japan earthquake have been incorporated in the new guidelines, such as cooperation regarding humanitarian support and disaster relief activities, as well as the need to have an alliance coordination mechanism available even in peacetime. The new guideline revised this April updated the general framework of respective roles and missions for Japan and the U.S., as well as our overall policy direction. The revision also has revealed a strategic vision to build a more robust alliance and share major responsibilities by adjusting the alliance to address the current security environment and by strengthening deterrence and our ability to respond every phase from peacetime to contingencies. The core of guidelines show the U.S. continuous and waving commitment to maintain peace and the security of Japan, while the new guidelines as a whole elaborate on the ways and the means in which we can fulfill our commitment through seamless, robust, flexible, and effective responses by both countries as an alliance with expanded bilateral cooperation in various fields. The new guidelines have also stipulated cooperation in new fields, such as space and cyberspace, as well as in traditional fields, including peacekeeping activities, maritime securities, and logistics, which motivate both countries to make further contribution to international security efforts. The importance of cooperation with regional and international partners and organizations has been also included in the document. In the future, Japan and the U.S. will continue to ex examine our own effort, develop capabilities, and conducting exercises 
and training. As I mentioned so far, the Japan-US alliance has transformed and evolved itself in accordance with the changing times. In the future, the alliance will be expected to be the one which can contribute to both Japan and the US, the region, as well as the rest of the world. From a broad point of view on the current global situation, not only people, material and capital, but cultures and ideologies flow across borders on a global scale, and this flow is gaining speed. The global economy is growing and deepening its interdependency among nations. The result is a complex structure in which nations cannot solve problems in a bilateral way. Under the current situation, our alliance needs the whole of government approach and cooperation, which requires coordination across various fields. In this sense, a high-level cooperation in the field of military and national security, as well as in economic and diplomatic levels will be required for our alliance in the future. And one more challenge I am sure we have to tackle is, uh, is to share as many issues and interests as possible between both countries. The number of shared interests is proportional to the strengths of the alliance. Therefore, it is crucial for Japan and the US to promote basic efforts to deepen mutual understanding and confidence in each other in a steady manner. In addition to creative and innovative ideas and thinking, I believe our success will be born from our character and uh, principles which we both hold dear and that these will sustain the alliance into the future. I hope my explanation today will deepen your understanding of the alliance and contribute to nurturing a mutual understanding. I would like to conclude my speech by providing one anecdote regarding the alliance. Japan and the US signed the Japan-US Security Treaty on September 8, 1951, not at the same gorgeous, some gorgeous venue, but at the NCO club house in a US horses base, which was situated 20 minutes from the center of San Francisco. As a representative of the government of Japan, then Prime Minister Shigeru Yoshida alone entered the room and signed the document. Years later, looking back at the moment, Prime Minister Yoshida said, the treaty itself is only a piece of paper. I signed the treaty because I thought it was the best way for Japan at that time. The future of Japan should be determined by future generations. Seventy years have passed since the end of the World War II, and the Japan-US alliance has achieved miraculous development after undergoing many transitions to align with the challenges of the security situation. As an officer of the JSDF, I have been involved on and off in the transition of the alliance in my roughly 40 years military career. The milestone year is seeing just another step in the progress of the alliance. I believe that the current Japan-US alliance is a piece of work passed from generation to generation. 
One generation makes their best effort for the alliance, and the next generation takes over it, added their own achievement to it, and makes it better and better. To continue, the succession is an important role I must play now. This concludes my speech. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much. Well, Admiral, thank you very much uh, for your remarks, and particularly the reminder at your close of Prime Minister Yoshida's comments about uh, signing a piece of paper. Uh, but uh, you really have to make it a living, breathing document. You've had almost 40 years of service to your nation, and I, for one, think that your nation owes you a debt of gratitude, just as it does your colleagues who are serving in uniform. You know, over that, if you wonder why Admiral Kwano is chief of staff, you only have to look at his schedule during this visit uh, to the United States. Now, I'm not going to remember them all. There are too many. Stratcom, CENTCOM, uh, SOCOM, <laughs> Second Marine Expeditionary Force, uh, discussions with uh, the chairman, General Dempsey, and the deputy secretary, Bob Work. Uh, and a visit yesterday with our, sec our Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, and I don't think that's ever happened before to a chairman here in the United States, at least not in my knowledge. So uh, he's got the energy for four of us, I'll tell you that. You have had, as you suggest in your speech, Admiral, the opportunity to live the alliance. So perhaps as an opening question, I might ask you how you've seen the military alliance change over your years of service? はい、まずあの、日米と私が若い頃、日米関係携わりましたけども、それに比べて日米の自衛隊と米軍との関係はより深くなったと実感しております。Well, certainly, as a young officer, I was involved in U.S.-Japan relations, but compared to that time, I would have to say that the relationship between the Japan Self-Defense Forces and the U.S. forces uh, has deepened quite a bit. I was in America, and I was in America, and uh, if I may speak about this, I have, uh, as a young, I did as a young officer, travel to the United States and, and participate in meetings alongside my superiors. But I would have to say, in terms of substance of what got discussed, it wasn't very deep back then. <laughs> Uh, but today, I met with and uh, engaged in a st strategic dialogue with uh, General Dempsey and also uh, had a meeting with uh, Commander Harris at PACOM. And what we spoke about uh, was quite substantial and uh, very deep. やはり1991年を期して自衛隊が国益を担ってアメリカと共にオペレーションをする時代に入ったからだと思います。And my thinking on this is that this has to do with the fact that uh, as of 1991, uh, the self-defense forces uh, became engaged in, the, in, op in operations uh, to defend uh, uh, our nation's interests uh, 
and to cooperate with the United States. Having been involved in these visits uh, from time to time, Admiral, I can assure you there's some method, the madness of the United States. Uh, the length and breadth of your visits and discussions show, I think, dramatically that the United States government wants to be involved with Japan in a way comfortable to Japan in every aspect of uh, military life. And I think that's something that came through loud and clear to you. Hi, hi. I might say, ask you, sir, if you'd give us in the audience a, an appreciation of the security concerns and the security environment uh, surrounding Japan. はい、まずあの、日本周辺の安全保障のまあ、あの、環境ですけども、やはり今北朝鮮が体制的に非常にまあ、不安定な状況だと思います。また、核の問題、ミサイルの問題は何ら解決しておりません。Well, certainly I would have to say if we look at uh, security uh, the security environment uh, surrounding Japan, we have, the, we have North Korea, and um, the regime is rather in insecure, unstable, and the nuclear missile issue has not been resolved at all. And, and China's uh, uh, activities in both the South and the East China Seas uh, having uh, quite rampant. And, and we are seeing a lot of activities on the part of, of the Russian uh, military in terms of their modernization and, and the activities that they have been engaged in. So I would have to say the environment is rather challenging. Sir, do you have expectations that we may see China declare a, an ADIS in the South China Sea? And if so, what do we do about it? Well, I, I, was, I did attend uh, the Shangri-La Dialogue. And on the occasion of uh, Shangri-La Dialogue, the representative from China did not deny the possibility of declaring ADIS in the South China Sea. And the representative also did not deny the possibility of making use of the uh, man-made islands uh, that are being uh, built, um, that they, they could be used for military purposes as well. And when we talk about the South China Sea, we have very important sea lanes there. And certainly uh, that gives us much concern. Sir, it would be my view that if China does declare another aid is that we do just what we did last time, China has no ability to, real ability to uh, do much more than to declare a zone. I've got to make sure it doesn't stand. That's a personal view. Um, Japan has, uh, the Air Self Defense Force has had to scramble last year up through April, or almost a record number of times, certainly since the end of the Cold War. What is your expectation going forward of the, the need for scrambling aircraft? Do you think it will lower, remain the same, or even heighten? As far as the number of scrambles we had last year, uh, it pretty much matches the number of scrambles we had during the midst of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And 
And one feature of that, or, or a, a characteristic, is that we have uh, more uh, scrambles against China. この傾向はあの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの
、that the United States hopes Japan would do. でこれが安倍総理が言われている積極的平和主義にもとに通じるものだと思っています。Will be greatly appreciated. It was at the time of the Gulf War that young Japanese were accused of not wanting to engage in dirty, hard, and dangerous work, the three Ks. But the JATI is certainly proving that not to be the case. それであの湾岸戦争の時に日本は先ほど言いましたお金を出したけども世界から評価されませんでした。Yes, so during the first Gulf War,、uh, as I mentioned, Japan showed out a lot of money which was not really appreciated by the world. Right. And we were told, Japan, you're too late, too little. And based on the post mortem we had after that experience uh, uh, at 9 11, I, I believe we were relatively quick,、uh, we, we were able to respond fairly quickly. The, you say,、uh, show the flag. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sir, now comes the part of、uh, the afternoon in which、uh, we have audience participation. We have some, I think, people、uh, in the audience with microphones. I only ask that when you stand up and ask a question, please identify yourself. Wait, wait, for, the,、uh, wait for the microphone, identify yourself, and、uh, ask the question of Admiral Kawano. So I think we have a gentleman right here first. Thank you very much.、Um, I'm Ben Self. I'm vice president of the Mansfield Foundation and an adjunct fellow here at CSIS Japan Chair. And、uh, in your excellent remarks, you skipped over the 1980s. And Mike Green,、uh, who's missing today, we all miss him, taught me that in the 1980s, Japan contributed a lot to our victory in the Cold War through especially its operations towards the Sea of Okhotsk and anti submarine warfare. And Japan's enormous contributions in anti submarine warfare against the Soviet fleet helped the US. In its victory、uh, in the Cold War. I'm wondering、uh, that legacy of Japan's strong capacity in anti submarine warfare can be brought to bear against a growing ballistic missile threat,、uh, submarine bu-、uh, ballistic missile threat from China、uh, based on Hainan, and whether Japan, in addition to potential maritime patrols in the South China Sea、uh, for surface activity, would consider anti submarine. Uh, patrolling in the South China Sea. I know, I'm a shirt to you, I know, 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 Yes, in fact, as you just pointed out, we feel very proud that we did make a major contribution to the victory of the Western Bloc in the Cold War. ただ残念ながらそれは国民からは見えなかったということです。それであの今言われたように、特に海上自衛隊は、対戦能力と対機雷戦、マイスイカね、の能力はこれを中心にして整備してきましたので、今でも非常に高いものがあります。And as far as the capabilities of the marine,、uh, maritime self defense force is concerned, it has uh, always um, uh, been um, strong in、um, anti warship and marine s-、uh, sweeping. And, and so those are the capabilities、uh, they still have that are quite strong. 
で現時点でもあま,あまり詳しいことは申し上げられませんが現時点でもアメリカと日本とによって、えー、あの緊密な連携で、えー、連携をこの分野で保っております。Well, I cannot really go into great details about this.、Uh, there, has been, uh, there has been very close coordination between the United States and Japan in this area. So, there's been a talk about、uh, you, you mentioned、uh, anti submarine activities possibly in the South China Sea, and, and there's been a, a, a mention of、um, uh, patrolling or, or doing surveillance in the South China Sea. But、uh, our position on this is、uh, we consider this as a potential future、uh, issue to be considered depending on、uh, how things pan out. Thank you. In the, in the back. Admiral, thank you very much. I'm Robbie Harris, a former naval person and also a, a fellow with Lockheed Martin Corporation. Thank you for your visit today. Thank you for the friendship of the Japanese Self Defense Force, and thank you for your personal friendship to this country.、Uh, would you please comment on the so called policy of rebalance to the Pacific? Uh, have you seen evidence of that rebalance and are you satisfied with the evidence you've seen? Thank you. Now, the American military is very difficult to do. Well, the defense budget in the United States、uh, is, is very tight at this time. でまだあの ISIL をはじめとして中東情勢も非常に厳しいものがあると思います。中東ですね。And the situation in the Middle East is very difficult. You have the、uh, ISIL. でその中においてあの日本へのロナルジョージワシントンに代わるロナルドレーガンの配備であるとか、新たなイージス艦の配備であるとか、目に見える形で私はあのアジアへのリバランスは進んでいると思いますそれだけ米国はアジア太平洋地域を重視していると私は理解をしております。So, in spite of these constraints, we have seen the、uh, Ronald Reagan replace the George Washington, and so and Aegis vessels have been deployed in our area, and so I believe that this is evidence that the United States considers、uh, the Asia Pacific a very important. Uh, region. We're going to, a Japanese, and I'll come back to you, please. Or a lady, yes, please. So I think of that as a tangible、uh, signs that that's the case. Uh, hi, I'm Hong Mingren from Shanghai Media Group. Actually, I have a question about that. Do you agree、Shanghai. that for a Bay administration, the purpose of the passage of this bill is to stir up the hate of the China threat theory, to loosen restrictions on Japan's military, and in return, unshackle of the control from the United States? Thank you. What is, what is the question? Once again, please. Would you repeat? Once again, please.、Uh, repeat your question. Okay. You、uh, do you agree about that for a bank administration? The purpose of the passage of the bill is to stir up the hate of the China threat theory. To loosen restrictions on Japan's military and in return unshackle the control from the United States. Well, I certainly don't agree with that assessment. あの私からコメントするのは控えたいと思いますが、えー、今この、えー、そうです控えたいと
And so given that this legislation is still under deliberation in the diet, I'd like to、uh, refrain from making any comments. しかし政府がこの安保法制を今国会に提出している理由は日本を軍事的に解き放すということではなくてより日米同盟を強化するための法制として出しております。Uh, however, I can say that the reason why the Japanese uh, government is, uh, has submitted this、uh, bill to the Japanese Diet is not to unleash、um, uh, military power and、um, unrestrained、uh, military force, but it's to strengthen the US Japan alliance. That's fine. Sure. Oh, Admiral,、uh, Steve Winters, consultant. You mentioned、uh, cooperation between Japan and also third parties in securing uh, uh, peace in the region.、Uh, recently, there have been uh, a joint uh, uh, surveillance uh, flights uh, with Japan, with the Philippines, looking at some of these reefs that the、uh, Chinese are building up. And、uh, I guess there's been a political、uh, a reaction to that from China. But how do you see that、uh, cooperation with the、uh, Philippines or possibly other uh, 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 regional uh, South?、Uh, See uh, nations uh, developing. あの今回あの、フィリピンとの間で、サーチレスキューの共同訓練を実施をいたしました。Yes, we had a joint,、uh, and we had joint training with the Philippines、uh, in search and rescue. でそれであの、我が自,自衛隊の P3C をパラワン島に展開をさせて、オペレーションをさせました。And、uh, we flew our、uh, SDF P3C patrol aircraft in Palawan to conduct this training. And ASEAN countries are very important to our country, and therefore、uh, we hope to、uh, engage in more of the, these, this type of uh, joint uh, training. でこのフィリピンとの訓練において中国から強いクレームが来たということは私としてはそういう認識はありません。And I don't have an understanding that China was reacted that strongly to this training that we had with, with the Philippines. Right under the third camera in. Hi, Hyo Dong Ro、uh, with the Yonam News Agency of South Korea. If there's any contingency on the、uh, Korean Peninsula,、uh, what will you do?、Uh, what would be the role of the Japanese Self Defense Army?、Uh, what kind of、um, consultative mechanism do you have with the US and South Korea? Thanks. Amazon, in the case of the Korean Peninsula, the Korean Peninsula is a very important thing. If we're talking about an emergency or contingency on the Korean Peninsula,、uh, what is、uh, at play now would be our law called the uh, surrounding uh, area uh, situation law. So, in that instance, through our consultations with the United States or South Korea, what we、uh, would be capable of doing would be to provide logistical support. So, the current Ampo Hose, the current a m p And even if the,、uh, once the security、uh, legislation is passed by the Diet,、uh, the, that fact, that, that framework, the basic framework,、uh, would remain the same. We have time for two more if they're brief. Yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Hiroshi Waguri, visiting fellow to the CSIS. I thank you for your wonderful briefing today. And I just would like, would like to ask you your, from your experiences. I think you know, the effectiveness of Japan, the joint operation between Japanese self defense forces and US forces are very important, continue to be very important. And could you elaborate 
how well the effectiveness of the joint operation between the two countries have evolved or improved so far up until now? And what do you think that we should do as a next step to further improve that effectiveness? I believe that the bilateral um, exercises uh, between the two countries ha have evolved quite a bit. で、あの、今米軍はあの、前からま、ジョイントという形を取っておりますで、日本も今ジョイントという基本的にオペレーションジョイントでやりますので so, uh, so the U.S. had uh, joint uh, exercises or, or, or joint um, joint services. Joint operations. Joint operations, and, and Japan now has joint operations, and therefore, uh, the bilateral joint exercises between the two countries uh, uh, have become um, much richer. So, the joint and uh, JSDF will undergo a reorganization, and that is, uh, we will modify our joint staff office. Uh, so uh, that would uh, result in a even a greater uh, evolution of bilateral exercises with the United States. Paul Jar, you have the last word against the moment, but a short word. Good afternoon, Admiral. Good to see you again. My name is Paul Jar. I'm the president of Global Strategies and Transformation. Uh, you've talked about the history of the alliance, and you've mentioned several very important turning points, starting with the, security, the signing of the security treaty in San Francisco, Cold War operations, the end of the Cold War, piracy operations, and so on. Would you describe and tell us just a little bit about the turning point that came in 2010 with Japan's new national security strategy. Did you say 2010? The in this kind of I'm sorry, I don't understand. You have... In 2010, Japan published a new national security strategy. Oh, Would you tell us about that, please? Uh, 2013. So in 2013, uh, Japan formulated the national security uh, strategy. でこれはあのアメリカではもうすでに作られたと思いますけども、あの日本ではこの戦略というものが作られておりませんでした今まで。and uh, military strat or security strategy is something that the United States has uh, uh, had, but up until that point, uh, Japan did not have a security strategy. And thanks to the creation of this uh, national security uh, strategy, we have the defense uh, guidelines uh, that uh, come under that, as well as a midterm uh, defense program. できたということは日本の防衛政策にとっての大きな一歩だったと考えております。
So I consider this a major step for Japanese defense in that uh, this strategy enable us to have um, our uh, policies formulated for defense and and um, I consider that to be a, a major step for, for us. Admiral, it is left to me now, on behalf of Dr. Hamry, um, president of CSIS, Dr. Hicks, uh, a director of the International Security Program, uh, to thank you, first of all, and to assure you that your words have left at least the American, most of the Americans in this audience, uh, filled with even greater enthusiasm for even greater efforts to support this alliance. So I would like to ask all of you to join with me and thank our guest, Admiral Kwano. Thank you.